Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Sam. I've been Muslim for about two and a half years, and this is my story. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about where you came from? Tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us a little bit about your family, etc. I'm from uh, St Albans in Hertfordshire, which is just north of London. Um, I'm from a nice middle class background. Um, got a very loving family, loving mother, loving father, brother and sister. Very standard, um, standard middle class family. I was always um, the one that kind of out of the family clashed and caused a lot of issues. Um, my brother and sister are very um, academic um, university students where I was always the one who was getting in trouble from primary school all the way through. I was always the one getting in trouble from teachers, getting in trouble from everything. Um, so I always always felt very, very different from my family, even though I had a alhamdulillah, fantastic up upbringing. So you felt like you were kind of... I always like felt outcast, outcast okay. massively. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always felt that I was very different from my family. Mm -hmm. um, but alhamdulillah, I can't, uh, fantastic parents. I can't criticise that, but I always felt very different. I felt like I was treated slightly different. I think it was more just my general attitude and behaviour towards my family was, was terrible. From a young age, I was always very, very rude to my, my mother and my father. Mm. So what, what do you think made that come arise, like, why, why you were so different to your other brothers and sisters? Uh, I don't know, I just felt like I had a lot of anger in me from, from a young age. I could never really pinpoint where it came from, but mm -hmm. I just remember at primary school having a, a huge amount of anger, and um, I could never really understand where it came from. I think, I don't know, it wasn't jealousy for my brother and sister, I just felt, I felt very different. I think for myself, I struggled with, um, with being in education and being in that environment, mm -hmm. so I think rather than um, wanting to learn and study when I was at school, I was constantly just messing around, trying to be the, uh, the class clown, just having a laugh the whole time, not really taking it too seriously, which obviously at that age affects you massively. Your teachers <coughs> don't want you in the class, mm -hmm. and it gets to a point when your, your students around you don't really want to associate you with you so much because they want to sort of study. So I just felt like I was a general sort of outcast. You know, like when you left primary school, what kind of person were you then when you decided to go into secondary school? When I was in year six, so the last final year of uh, primary school, that's when I, I really noticed myself being a lot more aggressive, um, a lot more rude, a lot more disrespectful to the elders around me. I remember um, an incident I had, I, I attacked a boy and um, when I went to get in trouble, I ended up just putting my finger up at the, at the teacher at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember just having this, like, this, this rage in me that I could never really pinpoint, but it felt strange. And then I moved to um, secondary school and it was just went from not great to really not great at all. Mm -hmm. um, got in trouble from, from day one, really. Um, messing around, being obnoxious, fighting, just being stupid, really. Mm -hmm. But you know, like when you were in secondary school, did you have like any role models? Was there any in, 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 anyone in particular that you used to look up to at this time? I used to look up to um, people like Eminem. I used to really, really like Eminem, D12, and all of these sort of rappers at the time. I remember, I used to dye my hair blonde and wear a blue blue bandana, <laughs> and and used to, that's what I used to look up to. Mm. Um, but no real role, role models other than that. Just just a bit of a just being a bit naughty. I used to enjoy being a bit naughty. Do you know what I mean? Not really obeying to the rules and. Smoking from a young age, just doing all the, the rebellion mm. from a young age. But you know, like some people, like when they get into secondary school, they might say, you know what, I'm getting to a stage of my life, I want to be this when I get older or what have you. Were you? Nah, you I'll, feel like that? just lost, just not really thinking about the future at all, just taking every day that came and just, just being a bit of, just a bit lost is the word. Mm. Not really, no ambition, mm -hmm. just, just, just being a naughty little boy, not really thinking too much. Alright, so tell us a little bit about your life after you left secondary school. So when I, when I finally got out of school, for each school year for me it seems to have got, got worse and worse. I ended up leaving and moving to another school, which things got even worse then. Um, and then I was actually asked to leave before, before the end of year 11, I was asked to leave. Um, and as soon as I left, I went on a bit of a rampage and I was doing all sorts of silly stuff. Lots of drinking all day and just being a general sort of tear away and being a bit of a, yeah, a bit ruthless really. And then um, when I was the age of 16, I got offered a job. My mum helped me get a job in a hair salon where I got in an environment of um, working for myself, working around quite good peers. They were very, very focused and they were just adults. So, so you, you know, before your mum got you this job, mm. were you ever into like. 
I, I was yeah, always had an interest in, in, in hair. I remember watching a programme on TV which was about well, these guys, they were hairdressers and I thought they were cool. I thought what they were doing was good. They were mm -hmm. very creative. They seemed to have all the girls around them. They were just they were in London doing this stuff. And I was quite inspired by that, to be honest. So that's what I was quite inspired by. I want, these guys were just, they looked like sort of head, they looked like rock stars. They were just doing, they were just doing a lot of interesting, fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was quite inspired by that. So when I got into hairdressing, I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember thinking at the time I had no other option, I had no qualifications, I had nothing else. And it was something I wanted to do, but didn't really want to be in the hair salon environment. I wanted to be more like men's hairdressing, barbering, but I had yeah. this job, so I went for it. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, that's when I started feeling a bit of a, a better feeling in myself, because I was actually treated like an adult. I, I, was, getting, I was getting paid, mm -hmm. I was, had good people around me, yeah. so that's when I actually actually wholeheartedly said I'm actually starting to enjoy life now. I feel like a bit of more of an adult. But you see at this stage in your life, what was the relationship like with like your other your brother your other family members? Um a bit distant, not not too not too bad. A bit distant. I was just I was okay. I was just a young sixteen, seventeen year old going out every weekend, going out actually going out every night of the week, just doing just doing silly stuff. Uh, but nothing too bad, nothing mm -hmm. major. Just mm -hmm. just going out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more when you started getting to the hair and stuff. And, and then, yeah, so I did work there for about a year. Then I took um, about two months off, which was a bad idea. I took two months off and... Why, why did you take two months off? I took two months because I lost that... Well, I left that job and then I didn't get into another job. And um, I spent that time at, um, mostly at a friend's house who um, just abusing drugs, basically, and thinking that this was the thing that... I wanted to get be involved in because I started really experimenting with drugs for the first time. What do you mean? What the person that you uh, around at that time? What do you mean? Were they just taking drugs? Yeah, drugs? no, no, that. Well, not really selling so much, just taking and experimenting with a lot of drugs. Oh, yeah. Are so, you ever scared doing stuff like that? Um, at first, I think even when I when I was young, I was always quite interested in drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. I was always quite interested in it. I always thought not necessarily it was cool, but it was something that interested me. Mm -hmm. So when I got the opportunity to do more more than just that, mm -hmm. it was I don't know I, I was actually showed a lot of interest in it, which is sad looking back, but it was something I and I, as when I started doing more drugs, to be honest, I kind of thought I found I found a home within that. I thought this is nice. This makes me feel nice. So I spent this these few months just really battering myself off, really, um, and then feeling in myself that. I'm not in a good place. And I'm starting, that's my first sort of signs of feeling a little bit depressed, a little bit more lost, a bit more kind of, I need some sort of something to focus on again. Did, did anyone notice it, like any of your friends? No, nah, the people around me at the time were on the same, on the same mission. Okay. Um, these times I, had, I didn't really have much money either, so it was kind of, it was like, considering I was from a nice background, I didn't really go home much. I was kind of like almost in a, like a squatting environment when I was just battering mm -hmm. drugs and just doing nothing really. Mm -hmm. um, but it got it got tiring, and then the one opportunity my mate got when I got a haircut in a salon, and I popped in with him, and then but asking for a seat, I ended up asking if they had a job. And they said, "Yeah, drop your CV in." So I put my CV into this shop, and uh, I got the job. I started getting things on track a little bit again, um, and worked there for about five years. And to be honest, career-wise, it was very beneficial. It got me together. I started being a bit more of a man. Mm -hmm. But along that time as well, I was doing a lot of silly stuff and. Well, were you still hanging around with that same person that you Yeah, were? and and worse and just kind of still working. I was still working nine to five and being res responsible, but as soon as I would I would disappear for the weekend and go out on the Friday night, come back on the Monday morning sort of thing and just partying a lot. Mm -hmm. And again, just partying was the thing that I worked for really. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So you were saying you were working in the hair salon for five years, then what? Then I left, started working for myself which I loved. I started running my own business um, for myself. Um, I started cutting hair, I had my own little thing set up, mm -hmm. um, still partying loads and progressively got more into more of the party stuff. Less, less, a little bit less work, more partying. Was in and around drugs 24-7. So it's kind of like you're going a little bit back? A little bit back. I thought in, in, in career-wise, Moving forward, I'm, I'm putting some money aside, and I'm, I'm building, and I'm working for myself. Mm -hmm. But like socially, just just mixed up with with the, the wrong things, really. Just in and around a lot of drugs, drug dealers, and taking drugs all the time. Always chasing the high, waking up early in the morning, smoking weed mm -hmm. till throughout to the evening, and just being just constantly chasing high, basically. Well, wasn't this taking a toll on your life at that time? It was. It was just kind of the way things were, just constantly just 
being high was just the way I generally was. Even when I'm working, I made sure I was high. It's kind of it, get, it got tiring, got expensive, but for me, it's the, the thing that I thought gave me kind of that peace. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I bun a, bun a joint, I'm, I'm, I'm nice. But realistically, you're not nice. You're you're nice for about an hour till it fades off, and then you have to bun another joint. Mm -hmm. And then for, before you know it, you're chasing the high. And before you know it, you're drug addict. Drug addict. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an illusion. It's an illusion. So. But throughout all this kind of stuff, I, got, I did get tired of it, but I had um, started having some quite surreal um, experiences with, um, with things, like things of the unseen. Um, I didn't really have much belief in ghosts or anything like that, but I started having these very, very real things where I was starting to see things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in front of me, sometimes in a, a deep state of a dream. Sometimes if I'm kind of meditated, I'm kind of leaving my body and going to other places. At the time, it wasn't really anything spiritual for me. It was just something a bit weird. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. Mm, mm. Um, but then I had a couple of experiences where I literally had the most intense out-of-body experience where I felt like I left, me and myself left the body that I see in the mirror and I went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And where I went was just as real as what I see day to day around me. But there was things in this place that weren't humans, but they were just as real as humans, and they were interacting with me, talking to me. I was having full-on conversation with these things. And wow, when I when I came out of this, this one particular time, three these three things came over to me, started talking to me, being a bit. It was very, it was creepy, but I kind of embraced it at the time. When I came out of this state, came back to this world, kind of sat there and reflected, and I thought, wow, I that I just started kind of understanding spirituality and understanding that. Possibly there's a bit more going on in life than I thought, because at the time I was very, very, I played the ignorant card happily. Naive, naive, Ignorance course, is bliss, yeah. and like was full of, I didn't look into anything like that, I'm thinking, do you know what, there's something else. It was, it was a supernatural experience, yeah? Mm. So I thought, okay, cool. So I started doing more and more of this because I was very interested in what actually was going on, and then I started studying the people who do this and all the kind of different views of what this thing is. Mm. Um, people call it different things, astral projection, out of body experiences. So you started proper looking into looking it. Looking into it and like and doing it myself and then looking into like it. Like experimenting yeah. yourself? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And doing it. And I would. And I would leave my body and I would go to these things, go to these places and have interaction with these things. Um, and I had a friend, of, a friend of mine at the time and I explained it to him. He said, oh, that thing that you're meeting is something called gin. I said, what's that? A drink? Mm. I said, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> J-I-N-N. Yeah. I said, I've never heard of it, mate. Kind of put it to one side and then he kind of... Uh, he started showing me a couple of things on YouTube about what gin is and about what this kind of like, you know what I mean, like Ouija boards and da 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 da, da kind of showed me, showed me some supernatural things, yeah? Mm. And I started making sense. And then I had a couple of mates who kind of claimed they were, maybe said they were Muslim necessarily, weren't really on Dean, mm. but like were Muslim, had knowledge about the unseen, you know, knew about things about the, the unseen, unseen and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm. So I was like, cool. And I started, then I started my, like, my study and I thought, okay, I know there's something out there. I didn't, think, I didn't think it was God, I didn't, didn't think it was, it was Allah, I didn't know what it was. I knew it was something spiritual and something supernatural I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So I went on a big quest and kind of locked off a lot of people mm -hmm. and just started studying, like studying all sorts of stuff. Started with like science and just understanding other dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, is this where I'm going? Is this somewhere in my mind or is this something else? Am I, have I got a soul? Have I got a spirit? So I started studying all this kind of different, loads of different, loads of different areas of, uh, of things and the thing that kind of really got my attention was Satanism, Freemasonry and um, what kind of what people, certain people in the music industry and in the Hollywood, what mm -hmm. they do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what presidents do, what basically the people who have a lot of money, and the people who higher run this power, world, basically. higher power, mm -hmm. what did they do? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was clear cut evidence, I could see what Masonry was, I started to learn about what Masonry was, I started to learn about what gin was and how all these things interact. So you were proper getting deep into this Deep right into now. it and loving it and I loved every minute of it. Um, and then there was a there was a, a friend of a friend who um, nasty guy. He started doing this black magic stuff, and I would hear stories from my close friends that this guy is doing these rituals. He's he's give, putting chickens down the black holes, and the chickens coming back with no head, and da 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 da, doing some strange stuff. I didn't understand it at the time. Didn't know what it was, but this guy basically started having a a relationship with a spiritual being, mm. a jinn. Mm. So all around my time of studying, this thing was happening as well. So it was not only was I looking... Is, this is close to you? Yeah, it was close to me, yeah. Mm. Like, I met and I knew the guy. Mm. Wasn't associated, so he was uh, someone I wanted to avoid. But it could, as I was studying it, 
like I'm looking on the internet and it was actually happening in real life at the same time. So it's all, it was all, for me, it was all my way of being guided through and it was kind of like clear cut evidence here, there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just studying all this kind of different, different Satanism stuff and spirituality. Didn't really go too much into, into any kind of real religion, but I started understanding a little bit more about your spiritual self. Mm -hmm. We're not really into the Buddhism thing, but kind of understanding what they thought. Spirituality. Spirituality and, like mm. and looking into that. Um, and then um, one time I was at my friend's house, I was watching this, um, this documentary called Shadows in Motion, which is all about the higher powers, who controls, who pulls the strings, what's really going on in the world, um, and uh, what Freemasonry is and who, who controls things. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of this documentary, it's about an hour long, it started um, putting out quotes of Quran, Hadith, and Islam is something I didn't have much knowledge on. And it started pulling out about things about the one-eyed Dajjal, end times, all this kind of stuff. That I thought, wow, you can heavily relate this into everything I've been studying about. Even the American the dollar note has got a one eye mm. with a triangle, all this kind of nonsense, all the stuff I've been learning about. Mm. I thought, wow, Islam's talking about this. Mm. What's this? And I started looking more into wow. that. And to be honest, that very evening, I was just looking deeply into the Islam. And what is Islam? I knew about... Muslims on the TV with the AK-47s and the bombs and this, that and the other. <laughs> and I knew that the, 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 the stereotypes, and to be honest, so ignorant, like, I used to think that, the, the, unfortunately, the interactions I had with Muslims as a younger was not great. They were definitely not, have, did not have a good character. They were very violent and, like, and rude and obnoxious. So I kind of wrote it off a little bit, like, they are just this a culture thing and da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then looking into understanding how, how Islam is connecting to Christianity, how Christianity is connected to Judaism and so on, understanding the prophets, mm. peace be upon them. Because um, I, I, I went to a Christian, my, school, my primary school was a Christian school. Um, so I had an idea about Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, um, etc. So I had an understanding and then I thought, wow, they, it all links, but Islam is the only one that focuses on Tawheed, monotheism, the so oneness, wow. the oneness of a Creator, rather than associating anything with it. And you never come across that. Never come across Nah. And you know what? Boom, it hit me mm. big time. It was, I literally put it in my heart then. I thought, wow. And I, had, and I was aware that there was a God. I, w I was aware that it was other. Mm. And I was aware that other was not a, a foreign cultural God. It just means God in Arabic. And it hit me that night. And I, it just literally felt like it hit me. And I was just, I was astonished, to be honest. And I sat there, I went outside, I had a cigarette. I just looked up and at the sky and thought, how could I have ever not realised there was a God? Everything, suddenly I had some sort of HD glasses given to me. <laughs> I'm looking around, looking at the trees, looking at the clouds. I'm thinking, how could I have ever refuted there being a God or creator? How else would we be here? How, how would this be here if I didn't... You know, if, and it was just from that night. And it was a bit of a shock to me because being on set about Muslims is, is, you know what I mean, they're kind of stereotyped as... A lot of terrorism and a lot of negative stuff. So I'm thinking, wow, this is the correct. This is correct. How am I going to go back to the people that I not only that I associate with someone, myself with, and my family, and say, look, I'm Muslim? It was something that I ended up meeting a few brothers who kind of come from a bit of a background like me, very kind of lost into kind of very, you know, materialistic stuff, women, drugs, all that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I used to thought was the best thing in life. Mm -hmm. And then they're sitting there telling me their story. I'm thinking, wow, well, why, why did not more people know about this? It's obvious, mm -hmm. it's clear. This message is very, very clear. Um, so from then, kind of worked towards studying a bit more about it because it was such an alien thing to me. I, I was the only, I didn't know any white guys that were Muslim. Mm -hmm. I knew people who knew a little bit about Islam who were white, but none, no one was Muslim, I'm thinking, for me, I'm a, I go out, I party, I've got a reputation for being, do you know what I mean, happy-go-lucky, all this kind of stuff. Like, for me to come back and be, I'm, I'm Muslim, how am I going to tell, how am I going to tell people this? So, what I did was, I just, I, I studied Islam, just the basic stuff, and do you know what, the more you look at it, the more evidence there is everywhere. There is no contradiction, the actual, the Quran itself is full of factual proof and evidence that it is the word of a supreme being. So, so what, you just started reading more like I started like reading, stuff. watching videos, just watching like little documentaries. But it was kind of, the more I watched, the more like my belief grew. And the more thinking, I was thinking, I just couldn't understand how I did not know about this and how I could have 
not believed in God? And why are not more people Muslim? Why are there only Muslims that I see, uh, Pakistani or Bengali, who are old? Like, what? That's 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 all I really ever really saw. People who were proper Muslims. I was thinking, why is there such a small minority of this world, or that the world that I knew at the time, that uh, know about this? This is the truth of life. Like, why do not more people know? So. I went out on a bit of a rampage trying to let everyone know. <laughs> I thought I had I thought I had a secret that no one else knew. Mm-hmm. And I, I soon learned that it's not quite as easy as relaying the message. It took wow. it took a long time for me to kind of to, to to get it. But when you understand that when Allah guides someone, when God guides someone, no one you I mean no one else, you can't be misguided mm-hmm. and guidance is simply from God. SubhanAllah. But at first she's like you I, first I was my mum, I was like, look So so how did, how did you take it to Hadra? So after about a week and a half, just chilled with the news. I had a couple, couple of brothers around me who were trying to encourage me and said, look, brother, you know it's the truth. You need to just take your shahada. Because when you take your shahada, that is your ticket to, to heaven. And without that, you're not going to heaven. Mm. I thought, okay, it's easier said than done. Because when I said that, that means I have to be an out and out. I have to be, mm. I have to be a Muslim. And it was very, even the word at the time, I didn't like. It, left, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just, it was strange. It was something that I wasn't... Not used to, not used to it. Nah, exactly. Yeah, of course. So I ended up. I went to. I went to. Um, I went to a Jummah, a Friday Jummah with uh, two brothers, and uh, first time. Um, they just, listen, didn't really understand anything. The Imam was Pakistani, was speaking mostly Urdu and then a little bit of Arabic and then a tiny bit of English. Didn't benefit from it at all. Most people in there, I knew from a, a bad for a bad reason anyway. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow. This is this is this is the, this is the Muslims around me. I was like, okay, cool. Anyway, <laughs> so far, I, I was surprised actually. I was, I was surprised to who I was seeing in the, in the masjid. And then as I left, um, the, one of the brothers I was with said, went up to someone and said, "Oh, the brother wants to take a shahada." This brother actually said, "I have to come back another time." This is this is this is the reaction. He said, "You have to come back another time." And then as I was walking off, another brother who I knew from way back mm-hmm. heard, rushed over to me and said, "No, no, let's do the shahada now." Mm-hmm. And then he said, okay, repeat after me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. And I became Muslim on the road with someone that I used to really heavily dislike. Mm-hmm. And now is one of my dearest friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it was, it was written for me and it was just, yeah, it was incredible. So after that, I became Muslim. Uh, and I started working, I started working towards understanding what being a Muslim was. And it was, a, it was, a, it was a, I want to say slow process. It's kind of understanding that, okay, I've got to pray five times a day. At first, I said, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. I'm busy. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do five yeah. of these prayers a day? It's impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I started with my Fajr prayer. And just to press play to a YouTube video with Fajr prayer. And I'm understanding when I'm getting up at that time, strange hour, and I'm standing there in my room, do I do my wudu? And I was standing there, I was thinking, wow, like the, the, peace, the peace I felt and the feeling that I was like, wow, this is, this is something quite special. So slowly, slowly worked doing more and more and I had a girlfriend at the time that kind of had to let her know that, look, I've become Muslim. Mm-hmm. Her first reaction was, why can't you become a Rastafarian? Or... <laughs> and so, do you know what, I had to, I had to let her go, um, which was heartbreaking. But the thing about that was, she, um, we were apart for eight months. I didn't see her once. Spoke to her regularly on WhatsApp, but after eight months, she went on a spiritual quest. And she became Muslim, and then I married her. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Do you know what I mean? So, I never ever since it's just I kind of I had about three months into being a Muslim. I had an invite from a brother that I got close to saying that I'm doing a special trip. I'm going to go to Saudi Arabia. I want to go to Jerusalem. Do you want to come? I said, How am I going to How am I going to tell my mum? Firstly, that she wasn't that impressed that I was a Muslim. How am I going to tell her that? I'm going to Mecca, I'm going to Medina, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. Mm. And I didn't have much knowledge on these places either. So they were kind of, I knew they were special places, but <clears throat> without knowledge, it was kind of just a, a very, you know, alien concept about going over there. Mm-hmm. So I said, yeah, cool. So we did it. It caused a lot of issues and worry for my mum. I think she thought I was actually going to go and do a jihad mission or because she was showing me papers of mm. revert, young white revert brothers who were going to Syria and this, that and the other. I said, this is, look, you're being brainwashed. You are gonna. They're tricking you. Mm-hmm. And I said, no. I'm, I'm, my brain has just been washed. Literally, I'm clean. But this is honestly the truth. And I try to show evidence after evidence. And do you know what? wasn't wasn't too interested in, in listening to it. So I did this trip, um, and it was it was life changing. I went to I went to Jerusalem, went to Bethlehem, went to Al Quds, Al Aqsa, and um, from there I went to Makkah, 
did Umrah, and then from there I went to Medina. And it was just, as a new Muslim, it was just, it was mind-blowing. It was incredible. It just emotional and just strange that I'd been a few months before that. Mm -hmm. I was in the rave, I was in a festival, and, now you're and then I'm standing in front of the Kaaba, Allah's house. Mm -hmm. And again, without much knowledge, I didn't understand much about the Kaaba, I didn't understand the history of it. Mm -hmm. But being in Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa, and the feeling and understanding like, about Solomon and learning, it was just incredible. It was just really, really incredible. And I got to share it with some close friends of mine. Um, and it was, it was just, it was special. And every single du'a that I, I did in Makkah was answered. Like, incredible, so yeah. So ever since I, I took my shahada and started working towards becoming a Muslim, I had to understand that by being a Muslim, you're striving to be the best person, <coughs> the best person you can be to the people around you, to your family, to your neighbor, to everyone. So this is the ultimate goal. We have to, we have to better ourselves. So from being very arrogant and obnoxious to then totally throw my ego out the window, finding my real self, making a huge effort to get close to my mum, huge effort to be friendly to everyone, to smile at everyone, to understand that just by smiling at someone is charity and there's a reward in just smiling. So Islam has taught me how to be a real man, it's taught me how to be a decent human being, how that you should do something for someone and not expect anything in return and how the more you do for your brothers in humanity whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim the better you feel because you're doing it sincerely for the sake of God to please God mm -hmm. to get reward and when you start learning how to find peace in this world the only way you can find true peace true happiness is through God and when you understand that that's it you're nice you are nice because if you're feeling down you do wudu you do pray, you pray some salah you go and do some charity you utter a good word, suddenly you start feeling better. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty of Islam. There's, the more you do for other people, the better you feel. Mm -hmm. So by being selfish, it's actually about being selfless because you've been selfish because you want to feel good and you want, you want good for you. But by doing that, you better, you better things around you. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's sorted my relationship out with my family. I feel that I want to go and buy my mum some flowers. I want to go around and make an effort to talk to her. I want to go around and give her a compliment. I want to sincerely get closer to her. I want to get closer to my father, I want to get closer to everyone. Um, before, I could really take it or leave it and I didn't really understand, you understand, understand the values of having a family that love you and all the, all the things they did for you as a child. It didn't even cross my mind to be honest, just, was just too lost and obnoxious. So, feeling that I have to be a man and have to take responsibility for myself. I got my own business, my own place to live a wife, now a child, so it's, I would say Islam has turned me into, into a man, a proper man. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, what advice have you got to Muslims as well, and also non-Muslims um, regarding Islam? My, my sincere advice to you is ask yourself, are you happy? Ask yourself, what are you doing in life? Ask yourself, is there a meaning to your life? And ask yourself, are you going to die? Because we all know as human beings that our life is a short-lived thing and we are guaranteed that we will meet death. Wherever we go, wherever we try and hide, we will, death will meet us, death will find us. And understand this life is full of tricks and illusions, but there is something that we have to deal with after this life. Now, you will be accountable for every single thing you have done from when you were, from after puberty, Till, till you die, you'll be have to stand in front of your Lord, the one that created you, and answer for everything you've done. So, ask yourself: Are you ready? Are you ready to die? Are you ready to meet your Lord? Are you ready to face either Jannah, Jahannam, heaven, or hellfire? Are you ready? Have you done enough? Have you done enough goodness, or are you too busy chasing money, chasing women, chasing the worldly life? Because Wallahi, this life is a trick and an illusion, and when it's up, we all know about it. When you, when, when you die, that's when you really wake up. Jazakallah khair, roadside to Islam. Assalamu alaikum.